Hi everyone, it's Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to find all of the intercepts and the asymptotes of the rational function of x minus 5 being divided by 3x uh, minus 1. And I also then want to sketch a graph. So how do we do this? Well, let's first focus on the intercepts. And let's specifically find the x-intercept first. Now you know the x-intercepts occur when the y value is equal to 0, the y value of the coordinate. So what you can do is you take your function, all right, instead of calling it q of x, I'm just going to call it y. So y is going to be equal to x minus 5 all over 3x minus 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set y equal to 0. Okay, so just erase the y and plug in a 0. And solve this now for x. I want to find the x value. Now if you notice, when you do your cross multiplication, this whole thing just cancels out. So basically when you have a rational function, what you're going to do to find the x-intercept is to set the numerator equal to 0, like it is here, and then just solve it. So x is going to be equal to 5. So the coordinate of the x-intercept is going to be y being 0 and x being 5. In other words, it's going to be 5 comma 0. All right, so that's going to be the x-intercept, 5 comma 0. That's a point. There we go. The next thing you're going to do is find the y-intercept. Now it turns out when you do the y-intercept, okay, when you find the y-intercept, you're going to switch this. Instead of calling y 0, you're going to call x 0. I know that kind of sounds a little confusing, right? But um, when you find y-intercept, you set x equal to 0, all right? And when you find uh, the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0. So, and then you just solve this now. So there's going to be negative 5 on the top, and there's going to be a negative 1 on the bottom, and then this is just 5, right? This is just equal to positive 5. So basically now, I'll erase this. So the y-intercept now is simply going to be, the coordinates that is, it's going to be 0, comma, 5. Okay? Cool. That takes care of the intercepts. The next thing is going to be the asymptote. Okay? So you have two types. you got your vertical asymptote, and you have your horizontal or slant asymptote. So to find the vertical asymptote, what you have to do is you're going to have your function, okay, over here. And you have to make sure this is in fully factored form. Okay, in other words, you want to try to cancel any factors, if possible, before you investigate your vertical asymptote. Now, it turns out I can't factor this anymore, so it's already in fully factored form. Okay, then once it's in fully factored form and you cancel it any factors that are in common, what you do is you take this denominator now and you set that bad boy equal to zero. And then all you do is solve it for x. So add 1 to both sides, so it's 3x is going to be equal to positive 1. You divide the 3 out, and therefore x is going to be equal to, what? 1 third. There we go. And this actually now is the equation of the vertical asymptote. Remember, all vertical lines in a graph have an x, a constant x value, and y will be 0 everywhere along that way. So that's the vertical asymptote. The next thing is the horizontal asymptote or the slant asymptote. Now, when you... You're, it's either going to have a horizontal or a slant. I, I don't want you to think it'll, it probably won't have both, okay? So the way to think this through, the horizontal and slant, in other words, I want you to group these two in your mind, is you have to identify whether this function is going to be top heavy, bottom he uh, equally heavy, or bottom heavy. In other words, what I'm saying is you look at the highest power of x in the numerator and you identify it as 1. You look at the highest power of x in the denominator, and you identify it as 1. And this is considered an equally heavy uh, function. They're both 1. If this were, let's say, a 2 on the top, and that was a 1, that would be a top heavy, and vice versa, 2 on the bottom, 1 on the top, that'd be a bottom heavy. Now, it turns out, when you have top heavy functions, that's when you're going to have a slant asymptote. We're going to have to do long division, all that stuff. In this case, though, we have something called an equally heavy, and that's going to be a horizontal asymptote. All right, and so is the bottom. The bottom is also a horizontal asymptote, bottom heavy. So what you do when you have an equally heavy is you're going to take the coefficient of the highest term of x there, which is a 1, and you divide it by the coefficient of the highest term in the denominator, which is 3. And guess what? This is now the horizontal asymptote. Just remember, horizontal lines have a value of y equals, and that's all that there is to that one. Okay? Now what we can do is we can begin to graph this. All right? And I'm looking at the values now. So it, this is a vertical asymptote one third, right? Horizontal asymptote one third again. You know, this is five and positive five and five. So I'm I'm going to kind of offset my graph maybe a little bit to this side, a little bit to this side, right? Just to have enough room. And every tick mark will or every line will represent a unit of one. 
So why don't we first uh, maybe do our x-intercept? So that's 5 comma 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plot your point. Y-intercept, 0, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plot your point. That's done. Next, put in your vertical asymptote. So x is equal to 1 third, right? So it's a vertical line right at 1 third. So it's going to be 1 third of the way. So roughly about there. And what I'll do is I'll dash this line a little bit. Make it look nice. How y'all doing? Hope everyone is having a good day. Right, what better day could there be than doing some asymptotes and graphing stuff? Right? Um, right. Horizontal asymptote, one-third as well. So you have a little line here. And that's going to be the, right at one-third roughly. And that's going to be then the horizontal asymptote. And you can just dash it. Now what's going to happen here is that um, you want to think about it this way now, that your function, all right, is either going to be in one of, well, two of four places. It's either the function is going to be in this quadrant and this quadrant, and the way I'm looking at it now is I'm looking at it as the asymptotes breaking this up, okay? Or it's going to be in this part and that part. Now I know I already, I already have points, right? I already have points in this quadrant, right, and this quadrant of my asymptote. Uh, you know, little division there. So I know that I'm dealing with a function in here and a function in here. Now, all you have to do is just keep in mind that the function, right, never reaches the asymptote, but just approaches it in both directions. So the way I would draw this is it has to go through that point. And it's going to make some kind of curve here over time. I'll try to make this a little bit neater. All right. But that's kind of the gist. That's kind of the way the function is going to look roughly. All right. And it's going to go on and on forever in both directions. And then the same thing over here, right? So it's going to make this little turn. Okay, great, fine and dandy. All right, so it does something that doesn't go backwards, just goes straight. I don't know if I'll be able to do that, but there we go. All right, it's just going to go straight on over for there and straight on down forever. And that's, that's the graph. That's all it would be. Now, you can always check in your calculator, right? Plug in the function now, x minus 5. Let's see how we are, right? And then divided by, make sure you put everything in parentheses, 3x minus 1. And then hit graph. And look, isn't that the same thing we basically drew? It's a beautiful thing. I don't know what I'm hitting. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Um, we have a ton of videos out there just for you to help you through your class where we perform actual problems, not only in math, but chemistry and physics as well. The best way to do well on your exams is to practice actual problems. All right? And if you're stuck on them, we have your back. All right. So take a look at some of the OpenStax books. Those are the books that we use. And um, just get to practice. No magic formula. Just a lot of work. Thanks for tuning in.